but I have broken away from the packing and sorting and getting ready for the estate sale and all of the moving chaos to come and visit some friends at the Fantastic Vintage Market. One of the first things I spot, and I'm always talking about this, this is a bride's basket. Sometimes you'll find just the metal holder and sometimes you find just the bowls. Okay, you've all been waiting for it. I've been a reseller for nearly 40 years, and I can't imagine my life without thrifting. I've learned about a lot of things over the years, and I love to share my knowledge and adventures with you. So let's go be profitable and make it fun. So what do you do when a friend comes to town who's never been to the Strip? You take them to the Strip. Uh, so our first stop is, we are at the Wynn. This is uh, the Parasol Bar. It used to be Parasols Down. And the reason I brought her here, they have this beautiful man-made lake and they do shows on the water that should be starting any time. We are going for the appetizer route tonight, but this is, I want to do this for like my parties. This is like kind of splendid right here. This is really cool. Charcuterie tray. I love the sparkly lights. Sparkly lights. Pretty bear. All right, here's Noah's dream right here. I'm not so sure his mama wants him driving one of these. You know what, this is, they have an extra little thingy now. Like where's the extra little thingy that they have in front of them? It's supposed to have an extra little thingy for protection. Just out here, walking the strip. See the sights like a tourist. Yeah, yeah. Buses, billboards, stuff. We just came from the wind, where we lost what, like 40 bucks? Yeah. The slot machines were not nice to us. Let's head over to the Venetian. Okie dokie. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> All the other tourists are doing it. I'm going to do it too. Woo. So this is going to be the path of the F1 race. This will all be closed. So they're repaving right now. That's why this is blocked off. The cones are getting it all ready, but it is making a traffic nightmare. It's only gonna get worse. We are at the ultra karaoke experience where we have our very own karaoke room. No judgment. We can just sing our faces off for an hour. Woo! Oh boy, it's hot. I, I mean, it's weird, I, I know. I talk about the heat doesn't bother me, living in Vegas, all of that, if I'm not moving. It's the moving part throwing into it. Because normally you can hang out in the air conditioning, come out in the evening and do your outside chores and that, but not while you're moving. While you're moving, you gotta get stuff done. Uh, so I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it a little bit. Um, but I have broken away from the packing and sorting and getting ready for the estate sale and all of the moving chaos to come and visit some friends at the Fantastic Vintage Market. It is um, something that happens every month here in Vegas, but this is a particularly special one for them. It's their fourth year anniversary, and the 
the woman who has created and runs us all um, asked me if I would come by. So I am here. I am here. And I needed a little break anyway. Um, so we're here and we're going to film a little bit. Now, my goal is not to come in here and find a whole bunch of stuff. What I would like to do is find a couple of really special things. That's it. That's my goal. A couple of really special things. Yes. See if I can stick to that. I did not bring my wagon. Did not come here to buy a whole bunch of stuff. I know, I know, you guys think that's pretty funny by now. Um, but honestly, I, as I am sorting and packing my garage full of things, I have become aware that it is time to cut back to buying less and selling more. And once I get the selling more in place, then I can buy more. And that's the discipline I'm gonna try to train myself to do. The struggle is real very hard to pass up good stuff you know you can make a profit on but what I'm realizing is that if I don't get a listed, I know and I, I'm like I need to I'm, I need to listen to myself if you can't get it listed it doesn't do any good to buy it and I have to get that into my own brain uh, no I'm not a hoarder I am a reseller who sees value in many many things who also makes uh, five shopping videos a week so it's it's a delicate balance that I have to figure out a little more and I will take you on that journey with me as I do that. Um, so in the meantime, so my car doesn't overheat sitting here idling with the air on. I'm going to get inside here and I'm going to get shop done. In we go through the heat of the parking lot. I think it's 110 is what my car said it is right now. 110 and it's still morning. It's supposed to be our last day of these record setting heat and then it's supposed to go down about five whole degrees. Yeehaw! <laughs> but it only lasts a couple months and then we have spectacular, spectacular weather. All right, let's go inside. <sighs> oh, thank you so much. All right, if you're coming here, just head to the bathrooms. So if you head, you kind of come in the back door head to the left, you will find the fantastic vintage market. And once you've found it, like, you know you found it. It's pretty spectacular. One of the first things I spot, and I'm always talking about this, this is a bride's basket. Sometimes you'll find just the metal holder and sometimes you find just the bowls. And then sometimes you find the whole shebang and that's how it's meant to go that's a beautiful piece this does look like Fenton it's got the hobnail it's got the double crimped ruffle beautiful beautiful piece of cranberry opalescent opalescent is when it has the white oh I might ask her I might ask her her prices are very fair but they're not necessarily reseller prices um, so this may not be the piece I end up with, but I'll still ask about it. This is a super interesting piece. It's got some amethyst little stones. Looks like they're kind of glued in there. It is signed. You can see underneath here, there is a signature. Very hard to read, but it's there. It's kind of a brutalist looking piece. Askin 75, it's a 1980 sign. Interesting that it's not signed in the back. Wait, maybe it is. Maybe that's part of the signature. I don't know, that's a kind of a fascinating piece right there. And then I looked up and this lamp, look at this lamp. It's a very unusual scene on this lamp. Usually you find them, you know, with some kind of a a floral or butterflies or something but this has the French what do they call that the Perot I think so I think that's what they call them that's a pretty cool piece and this is Czechoslovakian I'm pretty sure it looks like it it's very art deco let's see made in nope this is the made in Japan version so there is um, 
Japanese and then there's Czechoslovakian that make this very same kind of luster pattern. So this is the, the Japan version. And this is pretty common for that gold to be wearing off of the places where it was used the most. But that's neat to find those three pieces together. I love how these necklaces are displayed. Oh boy, if Dawn of Hudson Vintage was here, um, she could tell me what all of this was in a heartbeat. Look at that. I bet that glows. That's, that feels like lucite. I have a black light in my backpack. It's just a matter of do I want to spend the energy to get it out right now? I'm feeling a little lazy, I'm not going to lie. Those are pretty. Looks like malachite. Really nice. And I have learned, you know, to touch and feel and sense the quality by getting your hands on it. Like that feels like really good quality. Those are glass beads. Shell. Ooh, that's really interesting too with the freshwater pearls laid in there. It looks older to me. I don't know how old, but it looks older. It's a neat piece. Okay. Oh, such pretty things. Ooh, I like this painting too. That's a really nice scene. Impressionist is the style where you can tell what it is, but the details are just kind of, they're a little just blurry, not abstract, just blurry. And they call that impressionist style. Looks like Blish or Bliss is the artist on that one. So I'm picking up this beautiful rose bowl, enameled rose bowl too. And the uh, the baby lizards that go with my big lizards. It's like it's I have the exact same version only in the big giant one. So this is pretty cool to find this one that matches. I'm excited. Yay! Okay, what you got for me today? <laughs> I heard, yeah, that it's been good. That's a beautiful piece of cased glass for five dollars. Her prices are always spectacular, so I'm gonna I am I'm gonna make a little pile here. But I mean, honestly, how do I pass up such good deals? I'm weak. I'm weak, I I confess. Okay, that's the only piece here that I'm gonna grab. That's the only piece here, but let's see what's over here. Like these guys are really cute. They're ten dollars a set, though, so that'll stop that temptation for me. I mean, that is an excellent price for her to be charging here at the market, but it is not a price I can buy and resell them, which is okay. Let's see if anything else really, really calls to me. Because that's the thing today. It's got a really call to me. I got three things at that last booth. The bride's basket she sold to me for 20. The rose bowl she sold to me for 20. And the little lizard sculpture for 15. So that was that was a really good deal. This little guy is $5. It's very cute. Another day I probably would have picked him up. Maybe next month. When I come back next month. I will put some of this stuff in my memory banks. Because I'm here on the last day. It runs for three days. And I'm here on the last day. And next month I'll try to get here on the first day. And maybe get some things that I'm seeing. And as I'm editing this video, I'll see more. And uh, snag them then. But I'll get a few special, special treasures today. Fab Star Point, New York, the little kissing poodles, those are pretty cute. Okay, this uh, necklace set here is calling me and I got my black light out. I think I consider that glowing, right? Those are glowing. These ones aren't, but the petals there, 
do have a glow. I think that pretty much just tells me it is an older piece. It's $18 for the set, which I think is a fabulous price. I think I'm gonna hold off though. I'm gonna hold off on that one because I have a ton of jewelry right now, but I wanted to show you the glow. Okay, I think I'm just gonna get my one, my one little $5 piece of glass here. Okay, look at this beauty I just found. He is nice and he is signed Wedgwood, England. Beautiful, that's why, you know, it's not always Murano, but it doesn't mean it's not quality. So uh, we're gonna pick him up for $12. I'm wearing my black light around my neck to show you. These are all five bucks a piece. And there's more down here. More uranium glass. It's just such a trending item right now. It's hot, 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 but I'm gonna leave that for somebody else, believe it or not. Oh, but I might need that bird wall pocket for 14. Do I, do I, do I, do I, do I? No, 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 I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna be good. This is a pretty little piece of art pottery. It's Van Briggle. It's got a pretty a recognizable glaze Van Briggle does. It's hard to describe. Um, and then if you turn these old pieces over and the marks are just unmistakable, this is a beautiful piece of Colorado Springs, they're calling it, $150 on that. I love Van Briggle. I love the whole uh, arts and crafts movement style pottery, but I can only collect so many things. And right now it's blue glass. Right now, that could change. All right, she let me have my little bird for $10. Didn't even ask for a deal, she just gave it. This booth is 25% off. Kind of like that piece. I don't know who makes it, but it's really pretty. Salt and peppers. Hmm. Wizard of Oz ornaments. They're Kurt Adler. Those are cool. It's from Germany pre How much is it? I can't. I'm sorry. Oh, it's, uh, it's oh, I have a 80, it's tall glass 60, that matches that one. Some really pretty items. Nativity set. Oh, those mushroom lamps. Wow. I found quite a few cool things in Sunflower Sue's booth last time I was here. That's a really pretty lamp, 75 That's a great price, too. Oh my goodness, let's look around a little bit. Once again, the jewelry just always amazes me. And yet, I don't know enough. To know how much I can spend on things like look at this blue rhinestone necklace that to me just looks amazing but I I don't know is $30 a good price I don't know all right so many people loved that last elephant yes I have a little stash of assemblage pieces yes uh, but so many people loved the last elephant that I got that was like this I'm going to find out how much this guy is. All right, six bucks on the little elephant. Okay, look at this piece. Ooh, that's a glower too. Nice. Okay, whenever I'm here, I've got to come up here and get some tacos. 
lunch is served. Okay, I didn't get tacos. I got taquitos. Taquitos. Yeah, I can say it. Oh, well, it was very strange because I found myself just not really being able to get into my shopping mojo here. And I think it's just the heat. My car's saying 110. I think what it is, it's humid. Like we're not used to humidity here. And I think we have monsoons coming in. Um, but it's, it's everybody's saying like, oh, I'm just zapped. I'm just like, I have no energy. That's like literally, I sat there eating my lunch going, I need a nap. <laughs> like, but there's too much to do to take a nap. Uh, so let's get back home and do what needs to be done. I will take you through the progress that has been made and show you a little bit of the chaos and uh, share something really, really special with you if you're interested. All right, let's go do that. So first phase of tortoise burrows is done. We got one, two, three, and four holes dug. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put big igloo dog houses with a little igloo dog house. I should say not little, but smaller on the inside with an insulation of dirt between the two to keep them nice and cool. And you might ask, why are there four? Well, we are taking on another rescue we will have a new member of our little tortoise family coming very, very soon. So stay tuned for more info on that. But uh, so far, so good. So this is the almost finished. We still have to add some more dirt. So what's gonna happen, we're gonna cut the top off of there and then I'm gonna pour dirt in there. And then that dirt is going to be an insulation here, just as if they were like that far underground. Um, and then I'm probably gonna put some doors across here so that they can crawl in and this will come up all the way to the front here. So I'll be nice and nifty for them to get in. It'll be level and uh, they'll have their little, uh, perfect little burrows back here. And there's gonna be another cover I still have my wood shades will be on top of this. So they really have like three layers of out of the sun. And uh, yeah, it wasn't super cheap, but the time to get this built is so much faster than trying to dig and lay mason bricks and all of that. So I, I think I found a really good alternative right here. So. Just need to go get more dirt. 20 bags, 20 bags of potting soil have fit in the Kia. All right, on our way back. Okay, you've all been waiting for it. The long awaited, now it's a mess because we're putting in flooring. So this, there's still gonna be like an after when we get done here, but um, this is gonna be Noah's room. Look, new flooring is put in and it's absolutely everything I wanted. We still have to put the trim, the molding. Um, he's, he's getting stuck with a blue wall, whether he likes it or not. Here is Noah's bathroom. Yep, two masters. So my thinking is someday when Noah moves out, I could either get a roommate because there's they have their own bathroom or I don't know, mix a, maybe a nice Airbnb, or I sell it. Who knows, who knows what's gonna happen in the future. Nice big, like little hallway closet here. I will fill that up in no time at all. And then another little closet here. Okay. I'm still debating what to do. I think I am gonna put my main desk, yes, they left this. This is gonna go to the store. I don't, I don't want that here. I'm gonna put my big curio cabinet. No, I don't know. I see, I'm still so torn. Um, but my, my main desk is gonna go in here and I don't know if both aquariums will go in here, but at least one is gonna go in here of the big ones. And then if I turn around here, 
the little fish tank is gonna go on this wall. Or I might put one of the big ones here and then one big and one little in the room where I'm standing. That's what I have to decide on. I have to decide on that <laughs> by tomorrow because they move tomorrow. Um, so there's the plan there. I'll take you to the kitchen in a moment. Then over here, don't mind the trash can, over here is going to be my room and yep, I went blue. It's a little darker than I am. Picking out paint is no joke. I mean, I picked this lighter color for most of the room and I did one little darker accent wall. I'm gonna put my bed up against that wall, I think. And then I'm gonna put a little desk over here so that I can do my lives in here with Bougie because Bougie won't be able to be out and loose in the main part of the house. It's just too dangerous. But I think Bougie would like to be over here and talk to birdie friends outside. I, I think he might like that. Um, so this is my room and then this will be my master bathroom, which one day this will get a whole facelift. I've talked about, I wanna do the uplit counters in here and, and change this up a little bit. But for now, it's, it's pleasant and it's nice. I got room to hang stuff and put stuff on the counter. I'm super excited about decorating that. I've got a huge closet with no light. Why is there no light? Why is there no light? All right, we'll have to figure that out. Uh, but I have a huge walk-in closet, not quite as big as I have now. I didn't paint the inside of this because this will eventually get cedar lined just like I had at the house I'm moving out of because I really, really love that. I never had a bug in the closets. Um, so that is something we want to do in here in the future. All right, let's step back out here. You can see it's nice open floor plan, kitchen opens up here into like dining living room. And I think, I know I said I was gonna put the pool table in the garage, but now I'm kind of thinking I'm gonna put the pool table in here and um, use my garage for other things. Uh, I am gonna sell my bar or I'm gonna get like a small one. Now these are pieces of furniture that the previous residents left behind that I will need to sell. Uh, I wish I could get them over to the store, uh, over to the store, over to the, the house and, and get them in the estate sale, but I'm not sure that's gonna happen. Might just have to offer up them. Um, that goes out to the backyard, which I will show you momentarily. Uh, let's look at the kitchen. So we don't do a lot at a dining room table. That's why it's okay to put the pool table here. We like our bar stools and our little bar area or TV trays. That's just how we eat. And we're perfectly fine with that. So no need for a dining room table. This is a smaller stove than Noah would like, but it's what he's gonna have to work with for now. One day, one day this kitchen will get redone. I've already got some things on my wish list. I've got plenty of room for my pumpkins overhead. One day, one day, I will be moving that refrigerator over here and making that cupboards all the way down. So one day <laughs> when the kitchen remodel happens, and this is, oops, I just ran into it. One day when the kitchen remodel happens, um, that's what I'll do. I'm going to move the fridge over there, more cupboards there, bigger stove. Although by the time I do this, maybe Noah's not here anymore. Uh, no, who am I kidding? He's not leaving mama anytime soon. And uh, then we have a pantry. We have a walk-in pantry. Let's see if this light is working. <gasps> oh, no, we have lights burning out. That's weird. Okay, I don't quite understand what that just happened there. We'll have to figure that out. Um, pantry, I got pegboard and hooks in here. That's kind of an interesting little feature, huh? Huh, oh look, they even utilized the space above the door. That's kind of cool. So plenty of room to work in here. And they look, they put all these little extra shelves for 
double. I like that. I like that a lot. A lot of canned goods, a lot of storagey stuff. And then there's also another, another little uh, kind of a pantry closet here with pegboard, more pegboard. And then there is a laundry room. It's a nice functional laundry room. Not as ginormous as the one I have now, but it's, it's good. It'll do the trick. I don't have any place to hang clothes is the only thing. I guess that'll, that'll work. That'll work. But lots of cupboards to store things. And there's a folding area over here, which I like. Okay, that goes out to the garage. We'll come back to that. All right, then back here. Now, okay, guys, I let her pick out her colors. I let her pick out her own colors. She wanted the green. I can, this, this color is good. I like this color. Her contrasting color, I'm not too sure about. <laughs> but if she likes it, then that's all that matters because, you know, it's her room and she likes her greens to match her bird. Um, yeah, well, hopefully, hopefully she likes it. She hasn't seen it yet. It'll be the moment of truth. At least if we have to change it, it's just one small wall. Then we have a blue bathroom. I can get in here. Just a nice simple guest bathroom. It does have a full tub and shower, which is cool because our guest room is right over here. Boom diddy boom. So when Jordan comes to stay or if I have guests, this will be the guest room slash bird room. So my guests will have to uh, live with the birds. <laughs> because um, this is a nice bright light room for the birds. It'll also probably be a little extra space for Rachel to spread out and maybe do some of her crafts or reading room or whatever she needs to do in here to make this homey for her. Floors will go in tomorrow. So it's a lot smaller than I'm in now, but it's not so small that we can't, we can't make it work. Now the backyard, I do love the backyard. It was one of the selling features of the house because it has grass, it's got lots of vegetation. You can see the tortoise pens are gonna be right there. We're gonna be able to keep an eye on all of them. And it's a nice oversized patio. They left this amazing patio set here that seats eight, which is great because I like to have parties. They also left this amazing butterfly bench. Look at that. And a swing. So that's cool. I will be pulling out that oleander right there and that oleander right there. They gotta go, they gotta go. But we've got figs and some fruit trees and some real natural vegetation for the tortoises. I will be planting a lot more for the tortoises. They will have access to come onto the grass and graze and have a much more natural setting here. I'm super excited about that. And we can sit out here and enjoy them. And I think, I haven't decided yet. It, if I can get the misters put up out here, Priscilla and Hope will live out here under the porch uh, in the shade with some exposure and I'll have to, that's what I'm trying to figure out. They're still gonna need some sun time or a UVA, UVB lamp so they get that artificial um, sunshine because they can't just live in the shade all the time. Still figuring that out. We do have a jacuzzi. Eventually, another project will be to um, get this all screened in. I wanna screen this in completely and get the misters up and make this a nice place to even sit out in the summer. I mean, it's 112, I think, today. And here in the shade, yeah, it's uh, about 107. So only about a five degree difference from what it is out there. Not okay. All right, the garage. Also a work in progress. Um, of course you can see we're kind of throwing trash pile out here, 
But there's this really cool workspace countertop, which I love. Um, that will probably be where I do like my assemblages and, and work out here. My hope is to park in here. They left a refrigerator and a freezer. So I'm going to try and sell the ones I have at the other house so I don't have to move them. I'm debating where I want to put all of this stuff because ultimately I wanted to turn this into the game room. That's, that's the ultimate goal is to build a little wall here and have that be where the pool table and have a bar and, and all of that will, will go. So still so all of these decisions to be made in my head. Um, and the hope is to also park the car over on this side so that the juice box can live in a garage. Um, so yeah, anybody want to come help me take care of a big pile of carpet? <laughs> so that's the tour. That's the tour you guys have been waiting for. Uh, once we get everything done, I will take some more video of that. And once we're moved in, I will take some more video of that. The aquariums move in tomorrow. So really tonight I'm, I've really got to like nail down where I am going with those aquariums. I am so torn. I'm so torn. Um, Cause if I put them like two of the big ones in that one room, it's kind of going to make it narrowing going in there. Unless I put them both on the same wall, which I could do. I just don't know. I wish you guys could all tell me what to do. I wish somebody could just tell me what to do. Give me all the answers. I will figure it out though. All right. Till we meet again. aquarium moving day phase one uh, I have four aquariums they're gonna move two today and then two on Monday um, but today's the first day and I'm a nervous wreck because I still don't completely completely know where I'm putting them at the new house so I need to go over there I need to go over there and just mark it off and scope it out and just I'm such a visual like I have trouble looking at things on paper I really am like that tangible and every other move I've known right where I wanted to put the aquarium this house is I'm I'm not sure I'm not sure I'm looking for a little guidance from my aquarium guy too but anyway that's what's happening today peanut just came in from her little morning routine shall we say what do you think peanut are you ready to move was that a no do you want to move to a new house you know stuff is going on, don't you? Because the whole house is just an absolute mess. Here's these. This is before the lights go on. Yes, everybody's getting ready for the lights to go on. Um, I've sorted out a few games to get rid of. I still am having trouble figuring out what other games to get rid of. I really need the kids to get in here and help me. This is all for the estate sale. We really need to set up more tables, but we can't set up more tables until the sofa's gone and um this pile a lot of this is going to go back out to the garage to sell the curtis gear will stay in here the tables will stay in here the dogs will stay in here this we have to make room because the movers have to get to this i know i haven't even packed up my glass yet I'm, i have to go get more bubble wrap um so i have to pack up all my glass today so that they can move this tomorrow the movers come tomorrow the pool table, I'm still just, I wrestled, sell, keep, sell, keep. I love my pool table. And as we were like actually making a listing to sell the pool table last night, I got this really awful feeling in my gut, which tells me I probably should keep it. I will regret selling it. So there's that. Guinea pigs. 
You guys are the easiest to move. Um, we got Priscilla down here. I haven't even turned her light on yet. It's early. Um, more estate sale stuff. Um, see my couch. My couch is really big. So once we get this couch out of here, there's going to be a lot more room to work. Peanut, I see you. I see you peeking over the couch. I see your ears. Peanut, what are you doing? <laughs> These are all of my books that go in my office. I want to get it set back up. More estate sale stuff there. Lots of, we have, we have to have empty boxes for people at the estate sale to put stuff in. Um, I think I'm going to try to sell my bar. I did look up and found that it's a $7,000 bar. Of course, you can't see it right now. So maybe I'm, I'm hoping I could get close to a thousand for it. That would be really cool. That aquarium is going to be super easy. It's empty. And this only has two fish in it. Um, I don't know quite how it's all going to work. They're going to go live over in the big tank when we move everything. But I don't know how the whole thing is going to work until then. This guy right here, he doesn't care if it's, it's dark or not. He just wants breakfast. Always wants breakfast. Yes. And there's these guys. Hello. I know. They got little baby snails. It's a little, these are little baby snails. They come out on the glass in the morning. What are little babies? They're so cute. All right. So it's moving day for you guys. Yeah, my office. I've got to, got to make order in here. I mean, I got a lot of stuff packed up. Like the shelves are empty. I still have to pack up my glass out of that cabinet. And I have some glass in this cabinet. Lots of glass to pack up. Some glass on top, my lamp. Some stuff I don't let movers move. I just move that in my vehicle. You know, like my my little tortoiseshell peacock thing. Uh, but I gotta, I gotta deal with that today. Gotta deal with that today. And then out here garage oh so we have decided we have decided that we're going to do part of the estate sale selling out here so these shelves this is all stuff that's going to be sold in the estate sale we haven't even gotten over there yet um but i think once we get things out of the living room then we can just mad scramble and get all this stuff set up um, yeah, boy, 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 lots to do still. Honestly, if I told you I had this all figured out, I would be lying. I'm a little stressed, but that's to be expected. I mean, moving is one of the most stressful things you can do in your life. I'm excited, but also some of my demons come out during a move of just I want everything to be perfect and wanting everything to be perfect is a really really bad place to be because things just can't be perfect so this is like a a massive marathon exercise for me in letting go of that perfection like I'm worried about the paint colors I chose I'm second guessing I'm I'm like ah, I'm not gonna be able to repaint again because of the birds but in reality if I really needed to repaint again we moved the birds into a room with an air filter thing and paint. Like, it just happens. I want to get the air ducts clean. I haven't even scheduled an air duct cleaning company yet. I really need to do that because the dryer, the dryer vent cleaning is really important to me. There's just all of these pieces. I'm not finished packing. I'm not finished packing. I know it's going to be really hot tomorrow when the movers are here and I worry about... Um, how many hours, you know, because, you know, as you get to the end of the day hours, they don't work as efficiently as in the beginning. So not everything is moving tomorrow. I'm going to really kind of gauge that, get what's super important. Oh, yes. And I have to go get my kids some new beds because that's something we said we were going to do. New beds. <laughs> like, I got to go do that today, too. And on top of all of this, we had to close the store yesterday um, because all of the air conditioners were not working because on Monday, 
the air conditioning company sent in um, two guys who started messing around with the fuse box and did something. Blew something, something. And so none of the air conditioners worked when we got in there yesterday morning, which meant the building was 90 degrees. And customers came in and turned right back around. Like, okay, everybody go home, put a sign on the door. It was a crazy day. So there's that going on in the meantime too. No, it's fixed now. It's fixed. So now we have to like jump start into the week with a sale at the store. Now remember, Betsy is also running my state sales. So she's working at the store all day. Then she's coming here with her business partner and working on setting up the estate sale. It's just, it's just a crazy week. It's a crazy week. But it'll all come to fruition. And it will be what it's going to be. And uh, we'll, we'll see what that looks like. It's been a very, very odd week for me. There has been no shopping. The footage that I used here was taken on Saturday. So, and today is Wednesday. I have not stepped foot in a thrift store, except my own. And that's barely uh, this week. And um, I don't know. You know, you put all these plans on paper and you and you think you got it all figured out. And then when you get in the mix of it, it's like, oh, okay. I wasn't quite ready for that and that and that. Um, there have been setbacks. There have been other things thrown into the mix. And um, a lot of people leave comments about how they watch me get through all of this stuff and it's inspiring. And uh, I just want to say those comments really keep me going um, because it's not always easy. It truly is not always easy. I, I'm not always this together. I have my moments of panic. Those closest to me can tell you. Danny has her moments of panic. Um, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, reflecting on everything, what usually adds to my enormous stress is my perfectionism. I can let go of that and just let things be good enough. Are you good at that? I would love to know. Those of you who are able to just have things be good enough, how'd you get there? How's that work? What does that feel like? Leave me a comment below. And if you're like me, and you're still struggling with a little bit of that needing to control everything that happens, I'd love to hear that too, because we are all human beings getting through this thing called life together, and um, things are going to happen. Like uh, just this morning, so the aquariums are moving today, but instead of moving this morning, I just got told it got pushed back to like two or three this afternoon, and it's going to be super hot. And my aquarium guy reassures me it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. They're going to be fine. It's not going to heat up that bad in the 10 to 12 minute drive over to the house. He said, the fish are the last ones onto the trailer and the first ones off. So I'm anticipating they will be out in the heat for about 20 minutes and they won't be in direct sunlight. They're going to be in a trailer. And I'm justifying all this in my head and, and going, what choice do you have, Danny? And what is stressing about it going to do? So we're going to go with it. Of course, you're going to see all that on another video. Also, there will be many things being added over to the Niche Lady Critter Cam. And once this move is actually complete, there will be a live webcam on one of the aquariums. And that's part of like my stress is setting everything up on paper so that that happens like I'm sitting here I'm sitting here drawing out my floor plan at exactly where things are going to go because the aquarium aquarium is coming in before the furniture which makes it a little tricky so I have to know where that furniture is going because once the aquarium's in place that's it it's staying so um it is Wednesday the movers come tomorrow which is Thursday and uh we're gonna get this done yeah <laughs> so uh, I will share all that with you. Thank you for hitting the subscribe button and that little bell notification if you want to know when that new video comes up. Oh, and I keep forgetting to tell you, I do have a little special membership. You can become part of the Niche Nation 
And as soon as I get videos uploaded, you get access. You don't have to wait till my five o'clock drop time. If that's something that interests you, you can just go over there and hit that little join button and see the perks. Um, one of which is getting those early videos. All right, with that, I gotta get back to packing. You go be profitable and make it fun.